Hello, this is Ian Henry of Auto Analysis. Welcome to the March edition of the European Car and Light Commercial Vehicle Production Outlook. The economy is still in a very uncertain state. The Japanese earthquake and tsunami have only compounded the confusion. The UK economy contracted in the last quarter of last year and inflation is rising strongly here. We still have a fear of double-dip recession across Europe and the sovereign debt issue has resurfaced, particularly in Portugal. Nonetheless, the IMF is still expecting 4% growth globally, although the Japanese problems and uncertainty in the Middle East and North Africa could cause a revision later in the year. Europe's economies as a whole need to refocus their efforts on the East. Asia-Pacific will be the major area of growth in the near future. Problems within the EU still need addressing, and we wonder whether the strength of the French and the German economies would be enough to save Europe. And we believe that economic salvation, as it were, will come from globalisation, not simply an internal European solution. In the short term, we have a lot of supply chain disruption from Japan. The scale of this disruption is somewhat unclear at the moment, but many vehicle manufacturers have already reported supply problems, especially in speciality materials and parts. For example, paint pigments have already caused a shortage, and some car companies are saying that you can't order certain colours of vehicles at the moment. We think this will actually lead to a change in global sourcing patterns in the long run. The issue of production overcapacity has yet to be fully addressed. As we have observed before, there are only two European plants, namely GM's Antwerp and Fiat Sicily plants, which are closing or have closed. The vehicle manufacturers seem to prefer to adjust their manufacturing footprints rather than take decisive actions to cut capacity. We have doubts about the future of Mitsubishi's Dutch plant and some PSA facilities. But despite our worries about overcapacity, we still have new capacity coming on stream. As we have observed before, Mercedes in Hungary, Fiat in Serbia, Ford in Craiova, and BMW Leipzig are either new plants or expanding plants. And recently we've had the announcement from Ford, Fiat, GM and Volkswagen that they will build new plants in Russia, 300,000 units a year to exploit the Russian market. But these will themselves, in the turn, limit export potential from core European plants. And the other issue concerning overcapacity is the worry of what will happen with the Chinese, who are gradually appearing in Europe. Cherry will open a plant in Turkey shortly, and Great Wall in Bulgaria. Looking at the numbers, our production outlook for the years ahead. 2010 saw a total of about 18.2 million vehicles produced in Europe. This was a strong rise from the 16.1 in 2009. We're expecting a smaller rise in 2011 to about 18.8 million. From 2012, we're expecting growth to be much stronger in line with the IMF and UK government economic forecasts. And by 2012, European production will be back above the 2007 pre-recession levels. The growth in the coming years will be underpinned by the increased export orientation of European vehicle manufacturers and a series of new models. They will also be underpinned by the improvement in vehicle company finances. BMW, Daimler, PSA, Renault and Volkswagen all reported significant improvements to their finances last year. Volkswagen's profit, for example, multiplied several times over, and Daimler, PSA and Renault moved from loss into profit. Turning to the car companies themselves, BMW had a second best ever year in volume terms in 2010, with record revenue up nearly 20% to €61 billion. Euros. It's already met its 2012 targets for cutting purchasing costs, which have been greatly aided by a joint purchasing program with Daimler and a successful new model program. It's switching increasingly to small cars, electric vehicles and hybrids, and it's, it has a global target of 2 million units a year by 2020. It's announced a joint venture with PSA in EVs and hybrids, and it's launched its i sub-brand, primarily again for EVs and hybrids. Its planned expansion in China and the USA is aimed at balancing production equally between Germany and the rest of the world. Turning to its counterpart in Germany, Daimler, it too reported a very strong financial performance in 2010 with a 4.7 billion euro profit against a 2.6 billion loss in 2009. Daimler's revenue was up 25% to nearly 100 billion. It too is reorientating itself to small cars, including a joint venture with Renault, which will be at the heart of its new Mercedes Smart strategy. And it too is expanding in the hybrid area and is committed to having hybrid options on all its new cars from 2013 onwards. Fiat. Its integration with Chrysler is accelerating and it has increased its shareholding in Chrysler to 25%. It will be at 35% soon, depending on when certain new models will be made available in America. 
Full control of Chrysler awaits the refinancing of Chrysler's government debt. The unions have agreed to shift production from Poland to Italy, and they've also agreed to a major reorganization at Mirafiori in Italy to allow Jeep models to be made there, interestingly for export to the USA. As well as its 300,000 units a year plant in Serbia coming on stream soon, it has confirmed its own all-new Russian plant, also of 300,000 units a year, in contrast to its earlier plans to have a joint venture with Solars. Fiat will also make a small van for GM in Turkey and it will expand in Brazil with a second plant there. Turning to Ford, the main news here recently has concerned the start of production of the new Focus in Germany. This is a global model which will be made at more than six plants around the world with a very high degree of commonality of both parts and suppliers, particularly between Europe and North America. And we believe the suppliers will need to follow forward to the new Focus plants in Russia, Thailand and elsewhere. Union agreement has secured the future of the Genk plant. And Ford has announced a new joint venture in Russia with Solars to add its own 300,000 unit a year plant alongside similar moves by Fiat and others. The Russian joint venture with Solars will include car, SUV, engine and transmission production. GM GM will still be loss making in 2011 after restructuring costs but it should break even at the operating level. It still has around 1,000 jobs to cut, mostly at the Bochum transmissions plant. It has a clear new product and manufacturing strategy in place. This features a new small car to be made at Eisenach, including an electric version, the Astra Cabernet to be made in Poland, and the new Zafira coming out at the end of 2011, which will see the old model retained alongside it to give a wider range. GM will expand its joint ventures in Russia with a new joint venture with Gaz to make 30,000 Chevrolets a year, and it has also announced plans for its own 300,000 unit a year expansion in Russia through a mixture of additional joint ventures and the expansion of its Petersburg facility. It's freeing out capacity in Spain by switching the combo van replacement to the Fiat Tofash factory in Turkey. And here in the UK, we've just had good news that the Luton van plant's future has been successfully resolved. It will indeed make the new Vivaro from 2013. At Honda, well, there is no change to its existing plans for production in Turkey and the UK, they will continue as now for the foreseeable future. There will undoubtedly be some disruption to production in the short term owing to the lack of supplies from Japan, although the detail of this remains to be confirmed. At Hyundai Kia, the Russian factory is now in full production mode. It is confirmed it will swap production of certain models between the Czech and Slovak factories to balance the utilisation there. And it will add van production in Turkey, although not at its own plant there, but via a joint venture with the Turkish company Karsan. Mitsubishi, we, we have long-term concerns about the future of the Bourne factory, and this follows on from the decision not to make the new cult there. We have doubts that the outlander volumes will be sufficient to maintain the plant's viability. Turning to the French companies now, first PSA. It has a very strong financial position now. It met its 2010 targets for profit. Indeed, it exceeded them with a 1.5 billion euro profit in 2010, compared to a 700 million euro loss in 2009. Last year, its revenue was up 16% to 56 billion. It also achieved record global sales last year of 3.6 million units. 2011 is seeing its enhanced focus on hybrids and electric vehicles and its move up market with the Citroen DS brand. Alongside its cooperation with Mitsubishi, it has established a joint venture with BMW in EV and hybrid technology. And like Ford, it has announced a significant change in its supplier strategy. It has said that 13 key suppliers will move from accounting for 25% of purchasing spend at PSA to 50% within two to three years. The need to be one of those 13 key suppliers at PSA is clearly very high. At Renault and its affiliates, Nissan and Dacia. Well, Renault itself has reported a rise in revenue up 10% last year to 30 billion euros and a transformation from a loss of 3.1 billion last year to a profit of 3.5 billion euros. It too has a strong and increasing commitment to electric vehicles with the Fluence now in production, the Kango EV soon to be in production and the new Zoe and Twizy models coming on stream from next year. Its future in large cars and MPVs is somewhat unclear with the production of the new model switching to Dui. It has a joint venture with Daimler to shortly to come on stream, although the details still remain to be confirmed. Nissan UK reported record production in 2010, and Nissan Spain has confirmed investment in vans and pickups, which confirmed the future of the Barcelona factory, which is going down its own independent path in LCVs. The Dacia success story continues. It has a new plant in Morocco coming on stream in 2012. This will add 
200,000 capacity annually, although it could increase to 400,000, and most of these models will be sold in Europe. Renault and Nissan jointly expect to take control of Avtovaz of Russia in 2011. Tata. The good news here is that all three UK plants will be retained and Jaguar Land Rover will be profitable in the current financial year. The new model programme is accelerating, the first of which saw the Range Rover Evoque launch this year, boosting employment in UK sourcing. Production in China should take place within two to three years and CKD assembly in India should take place from the, the middle of this year. Toyota, well here it's still suffering from the problems of the recalls of last year and the damage to the company's image. This has been compounded by the recent Japanese disaster. On the good news front of Toyota, the UK will see all production of the Aris, the new model from 2012, concentrated here. The Turkish factory should receive the Corolla sedan instead. Plans for expansion of the Russian plant have been delayed, we understand. Europe, however, is not the centre of Toyota's near-term plans as it has to focus on its problems in Japan and the opportunities presented in the USA. The Volkswagen Group is a major success story in Europe. 2010 saw record sales up to 7 million units worldwide, up 13.5%. Turnover reached 127 billion euros, with profit multiplying several times from just under 1 billion to over 7 billion. VW, Audi and Skoda themselves were very profitable, but certain Bentley were loss-making. Growth in 2010 in Europe was approximately 11.6%, but most of the growth really was in Asia, and particularly China, up 37%. It's investing heavily in its European facilities. 52 billion euros will be invested by 2011, plus another 10 billion euros in China, where it has a series of joint venture plants. Expansion of its own plant in Russia will not be enough to meet the Russian market demand, and it is ex expanding in Russia with a joint venture with gas to make 300,000 units a year. The full mer merger with Porsche has been delayed until 2012 for various legal and financial reasons, and interestingly there have been no developments in the alliance with Suzuki which sees a cross shareholding between the two companies. At Volvo, the situation is still awaiting clarification, especially with regard to the replacement for the high-volume S40 and V50 models. We expect Volvos to be made in at least two factories in China in the near future, and ultimately get Geely to produce its own vehicles in Europe, but the timing of these has yet to be clarified. Saab, we still have doubts about the long-term viability of this company as an independent given its low volumes. It needs the new 93 model as soon as possible, and for this to be a much bigger success than the preceding model. Cherry will be producing vehicles in Turkey from the end of next year, initially at the rate of 100,000 vehicles, rise to 200,000 by the middle of the decade. So in conclusion, 2010 saw strong production growth, which is underpinned by new models, the last phases of the scrappage schemes and exports beyond Europe. However, even with new models continuing to come on stream and strong growth in Asia-Pacific, we expect slower volume growth in 2011 due to the general economic uncertainty and the slowdown due to the Japanese disruption. Our outlook assumes no double-dip recession, and we remain cautiously optimistic but very wary of the economic uncertainty, which has been compounded by supply chain problems from Japan and political upheaval in North Africa and the Middle East. Europe's financial problems seem to have been averted last year, but problems in Portugal and Spain have reared up again, and Ireland's problems have not been entirely resolved. The overcapacity issue is still not being addressed in Europe. We see decisions being delayed, and we think the issue of overcapacity will come back to haunt the European industry in the future, especially in view of the arrival of the Chinese in the near future and the expansion of production in Russia. The full report is available to be downloaded from the SMT's website, and the link is now being shown on the screen. We will welcome questions which can be sent to us at the email link also shown on the screen. Thank you for listening.